Hey, how's it going? Today we're doing a short guide on the bosses of Fyodor. So it's a very unique map. There are seven bosses, and they're kind of set up in a tiered system. And the whole thing starts off with killing alpha creatures. So it doesn't matter if it's an alpha raptor, maybe an alpha rex, an alpha meg, or maybe if you want to go down to the abyss for the alpha moses, you get rune stones from them. And it's kind of where everything starts off. You need those rune stones to spawn in the three open world bosses. Once you kill off the three open world bosses, those will drop relics, and you can go and fight the Broodmother, the Megapithecus, and the Dragon. Kind of all the bosses from the island. Those guys give you trophies. Those trophies are taken then and put into the obelisk to fight the final boss, which is a Finrare. It's kind of a neat system, man. It's definitely unique. And like I said, three of them are open world bosses. So there's no limit on teams. You can take in whatever you want, even normal creatures that can't be used in a normal boss fight like, say, Gigas or Megalanian stuff, you can use those on the open world bosses. So it's kind of neat, man. I definitely like it for testing out new creatures. So what we're going to do today, we're going to hop on our Desmodus. It's kind of a key to this because some of the places we're going to are in the different portals. You can't fly with normal creatures in there. We're going to head over, show you the locations, show you where to get them at, and kind of the tier system to go through. Let's put this into there. So our first stop is going to be the only creature that is in this part of the realm. There's the bee. It's going to be the easiest of the open world bosses. We'll get up here to the cave, show you roughly where it's at, and show you how to spawn it in. All right, so the first stop on the open world boss list is going to be Bela, and it's the B. It is the simplest of the three bosses, and where we're at, just for a point of reference, that's the green obelisk. Look for the little dam and waterfall, and we are literally at the north side of the map. Map border's like right there. And then where we're at for GPS... Our GPS coordinates are roughly 03.8 and 47.6. Kind of see us. Well, really can't see us. <laughs> My middle finger's in the way. All the way up there at the top of the map, kind of in the middle. Look for this little pillar and the small cave right here. So it's not too hard. As you go in, there's a couple creatures. There's a couple of the snakes usually around. Some of the dire bears. You got some of the ants on the ground. Stuff like that. A couple dragonflies. As you come into the cave here, you've also got some honey. So you can... Get the honey, a little bit of polymer and stuff. So definitely check it out. There's one of the bears there. This is a little arena. And as you can see, the little terminal here for spawning it in. It's laying right here. Hop off. Access it. It's going to cost you 30 rune stones for each one of the open world bosses. So you need 90 altogether. And you have to be a level 50 to even start the fight. Super simple. You put your rune stones in here. Spawn it in. And there's your boss fight. Everything happens right here. You can fit Rex and Gigas in here. It looks kind of small, but they do fit. And like I said, the B is going to be the easiest one to start with. So our next stop is going to be over at the Portal Cave. Not sure if you know where it's at, so I'll show you the GPS coordinates. We're going to be heading over to Asgard for the second of the three world bosses. It's kind of the easiest one. This one's going to be a dual one, and <laughs> it's two of the Fenrirs. And then what you get out of these is Relics. So even though there's three open world bosses, like I said, the next one has two at it. You get the Bela relic out of this one. And then our next stop will be for the Haiti and Skull. So let's get up here. I'll show you the portal cave and then we'll jump into Asgard and show you about the next world boss. All right, so we're at the portal cave. A good thing to look for. So there is the kind of snow area over there. As you come across, there's one big part of the mountain that sticks out. It's got gold all the way around it. Just to the left of it is where we're going for the portal cave. So the map and coordinates for this is roughly 40.6 and 57.4. Kind of see it's right there in the middle. Can't really miss it. That'll bring you to the portal cave. So there's three different portals you can go through. Portals, realms, whatever you want to call them. There is no requirements to go in. Just a level one survivor and then no other costs. So that's one that we're not going into. There's only one realm. Vanaheim that doesn't have an open world boss. Asgard is a middle one. That's the one we're going to now. We'll pick up our creature. You simply walk up to the terminal and access it. And it starts. It kind of looks like a boss fight whenever you start it. And it'll take you in. So we'll get in there and show you how to get to the next set of bosses. All right. So as you spawn in. A point of reference, if you look behind you, there's kind of like a green-looking skeleton. It's got a bunch of moss on it and stuff. We'll hop on our bat, and we're going the opposite direction of what that is. Again, you can't use any Argentavis or Snow Owls over here. You got to use the bat. It's the only one that's allowed to fly in the portals. 
And this one is super simple to get to. It's literally just right up here on the other side of this little cliff. And that'll be the terminal for Hadean Skull. Alright, as you come over the cliff here, you can kind of see our little spawn terminal right here. So this one's a little bit different. You have a big, huge open area, and there is something different about this one. If you go too far away from the terminal, it will reset the boss. He'll come back over here, and they will reset to full health. So don't travel too far away, but plenty of room to bring in a bunch of wrecks or whatever else you want to bring. And then the coordinates and stuff for this one is roughly 20.5 and 37.3. Kind of sees up there at the top left, spinning around. That'll bring it to the portal here. It's going to be the same thing. All you have to do, put that away, man, put it away. All you have to do, take your, your rune stones, throw them into here. Same requirements, 30 rune stones, level 50, and that'll spawn in the two bosses, Hadean and Skull. One will spawn in right here, one will spawn in over here. They're a little bit different too. So, one has high health and low damage, and the other one has very high damage, but lower health. So it's kind of, uh, <laughs> I'll let you figure out which one's which, and kind of go from there. And then you'll get the relics when you're done as well, which is going to be the Haiti and Skull. So now we're going over to the cold biome. We're going right back to the portal room, and we're going into the cold area, and this is going to be for Steinbjorn. It's kind of, a, kind of a unique one. He gets a very high damage reduction on most creatures, so it's, it's going to be a lot of testing for you to figure out which ones bypass his armor and which ones doesn't. But let's get back up here, go through the terminal. I'll show you again in the portal room where to go, and jump in for the last open world boss. All right, now that we're back in the portal room, the one we're going to is this one, Jodenheim. I think how you pronounce it. It is going to be very, very cold in here. I highly recommend doing this boss fight during the day and not at night, because as it gets nighttime, the temperature does go down. Same thing, requirement is level one survivor. Jump in and on to the next boss. All right, so as we get into here, you can see it is very, very cold at the bottom right down there. We're going to hop onto our bat. And where we're going for this one is almost all the way north, a little bit to the right, though. And we'll find, it's kind of a, you're looking for a lake. There's going to be a lake and a cave to go into for this one as well. All right, so just for a point of reference, there is the terminal we spawned in at. Like I said, just go north and a little bit to the right. You're looking for this lake here. It's kind of hard to miss. It's the only lake around. <laughs> but look for the little totem poles, man. You know you're at the right one. In here is the cave. So the coordinates and map location, we're at 77.5 and 31. It'll bring you right here, bottom left of the map. Can't really miss it. Like I said, man, highly suggest you come here during the day. Nighttime, it gets super cold. We are at minus 43, <laughs> and it's still during the day, so it gets pretty cold at night. As you come through here, there's a couple chambers. Don't throw all your teams out until you get to the very end. It gets very narrow here, and you can barely fit through. And this is the boss arena. It's not too bad. Fairly big. You can fit Gigas and Rex in here. So you can kind of bring whatever you want to. Same as usual. Your terminal. It's going to take 30 of the rune stones. And then requirement is still level 50. Once you spawn in a Steinbjorn and beat them, you'll get your final relic. This one right here. And that is all the ones for the open world bosses. Next set on the tier list is for the Broodmother, Megapithecus. And the dragon. So those are going to take one each of the rune stones. One requires two. I think it's, I think it's a brood mother. We'll have to see. One of them requires two, or maybe it's a dragon. It also requires some of the animal parts and some of the artifacts. So it's uh, it's just a lot of stuff to gather. All those are up in the overworld. No more are in the portals. So let's head up there, show you the locations of those, show you the requirements, and continue on the tier list. All right, now that we're back up here in the overworld. Next stop is going to be the Megapithecus. For reference, there's a red obelisk in Volcano Island. What you're looking for, very easy to see at night, is some of these purple crystals. They kind of glow. There's a small cave here. The coordinates and map location, we're at 57.1 and 85. That'll bring you, we're kind of at the bottom right over there. Kind of see us spinning around. Far right. That'll bring you to the cave. Quite a bit of stuff in here. It's definitely not safe, I can tell you that. You got a lot of your aberration stuff in here. You've got the roll rats, you've got your ravagers, you've got the charge stations, you've got a bunch of the different flavors of crystals and stuff. There's also some loot drops. It's a big loop. You can go that way, or you can go this way. It all connects to the exact same area. These have also got some of the Carnos, some Spinos, Megalosaurus. 
<laughs> you got the landmines, Perlovia. Like I said, man, there's a lot of stuff. There's also element in here. And there's always a crab waiting at the terminal. This is where we're going to for the terminal. Like I said, you can't miss it in here. Try to do this before the crab comes by. And for this one, for the Gamma, all you're going to need is the Steinbjorn Relic. You need the Artifact of the Pack. Devourer and Brute. And then as it kind of goes up in tiers, you need the different parts from animals as well, right? As it scales up, all the artifacts are the same. On to the next one, and that will be the Broodmother. Alright, so we're just outside the Broodmother cave. This one's kind of harder to find, man. It's, it's kind of hidden. So where we're at, there's the Volcano Island. There's the snow island over there, and where we're going to is a very, very small little cave. Kind of look for the waterfalls, man. There's a couple of them around. But here's the cave. Very narrow to get in. Very hard to see. The coordinates are 57.5 and 65.5. Kind of in the middle of the map, almost down there. As you come in here, you got your normal creatures. That goes over, kind of loops around as well. But you got your snakes, your spiders, your scorpions. Right through there is where that loops around to. You can kind of barely make it. Come around here, there is a bridge. Comes across, and here is your terminal. So for this one, the relic you're going to need for this one is going to be from the bee. And then you need the artifact of the massive, artifact of the hunter, and artifact of the clever. Same thing as you go up in tier. It's going to be some more of the animal parts as well. However, the relic and the artifacts all stay the same. Next up will be the dragon, and that'll be the third and final of the mid-tier bosses that you have to fight. So for the dragon, there is a very large cave system down here. There's multiple ways to get to it. However, this is the most direct and easiest to get to. For reference, that is the blue obelisk. And where we're at, we are roughly 86.1 and 2.4. Bottom left of the map, all the way at the map border again. Kind of see us down there? Like I said, there's a couple different ways to get to this. However... This is the most direct way in. As you get down here, it's a lovely little cave again. Super simple to get there. Again, same thing. You can't fly in past, I think it's like right here. You'll get kicked off if you're not on a bat. And right up here on the left is a terminal. So this one requires the two relics from Haiti and Skull. So it's a little bit different. As you can see, you got the Haiti and Skull relic. You've got the Artifact of the Strong, Artifact of the Skylord, Artifact of the Mune, and Artifact of the Cunning. Exact same thing, though. The higher you go, you definitely need more parts. <laughs> this one's a tough one, man. You need some of the Squid Tentacles, Giga Hearts, a lot of stuff from in the water, man. Definitely a tough boss to do. But that'll come, kind of complete everything. So as you beat all these, you get the trophies from them. And that'll be all three flavors of those. All you gotta do now... Head up to an obelisk, and that is where you spawn in the final boss. So we'll head right up top here. There is a blue obelisk, and I'll show you where that's at. So for this last part, you can use any of the three obelisks that are here. Also, when you're in the portal, you can use those terminals as well to spawn in the boss if you want to from that location. All depends on where you live, where your base is at, where is easy for you. All you do then is you drop in your three of your trophies that you got from the bosses, and then it kind of correlates to what level you want to do. If you want to do the Gamma version of the final boss, you got to beat all the Gamma bosses. If you want to do the beta, you have to get all the beta trophies. So it kind of does like that all the way up. And the good thing about this part is, so it is the final boss, it's always just trophies. No extra parts, none of the artifacts or relics or anything else. You kind of do that for the lower tiers and everything. And then you can beat this one, get some special stuff at the end. You do have to be level 100, level 75, and level 55, just like normal. Same as the normal ones. But that's it, man. It's not too bad. Like I said, I like this map because of the different tier systems. You got different teams you can use. You've got different challenges for getting it. I mean, it kind of makes harvesting, or not harvesting, but hunting down all the alpha creatures, you know, a reason for it, right? To get the rune stones to progress on as you go. However, we are gonna go ahead and leave this one here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you find the guide useful. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.